Hello, my name is Sarah Macon and this is Road to Ruin, The Journey of the Poppy. Road to Ruin, The Journey of the Poppy will explore the historical origin of the cultivation, manufacture, distribution, and usage of substances derived from the poppy plant and how those historical usage precedents have impacted the culture of modern day substance addiction and abuse. We will fe feature the many treatment options that are available to help navigate those that have succumbed to the disease of substance addiction and towards the destination of recovery. Shortly after we are born and throughout our lives, we are faced with challenges and make decisions, both positive and negative, regarding the many issues facing us in our daily lives. We often make choices that may seem illogical and unreasonable to everyone but ourselves in regards to the use and abuse of both legal and illegal drugs. For centuries, one of the social, mental, and physical choices that humanity was faced with making oftentimes brought a negative element to our very existence. One of those decisions is to use artificial substances. Statistics confirm the reality that most people ultimately fall victim to results of such usage regardless of their social or economic status. Psychologists and addiction treatment professionals often theorize about the ingestion of drugs and how substances are often the primary and most vital component that drug users seek to satisfy a segment of the pleasure principle that is buried somewhere deep in all of us. However, there will almost always be negative behavior based upon the legal or illicit ingestion and dependency on those substances. When individuals choose the substances awaiting them when they board the poppy train, they can almost always be assured that unless they are ingesting those dangerous substances for medical purposes and under strict medical monitoring, their usage and their polka with the poppy will most likely leave them on the dance floor of life alone and confused. For thousands of years, those gaining pleasure from ingesting mind and body altering substances derived from and connected to the poppy plant have all but assured them that the limited amount of pleasure that they would receive would be insignificant when compared to the almost unlimited pain and suffering that it would inflict upon them as well as many of those that surround them. And I'll be back with more Road to Ruin, The Journey of the Poppy after this break. took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. 
no one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. We built the entire library out of recycled bottles. Fried ants are delicious. We finished a clinic in our, in our rainstorm. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. So I learned this dance. I'll show you this dance. In la keg, a la keen. The classroom was, was more of a class tent. I think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. Beans for breakfast, beans for lunch, beans for dinner. We ate a lot of beans. I learned a third language. My seatmate on the bus was a goat. Always include the village elders. Always. My morning commute was by canoe. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience. To all the Peace Corps volunteers, past, present, and future, thank you for your service to your country and the world. We are World Vision, and we believe in children. We believe in God's calling to help them flourish and achieve a full life. We believe every child deserves clean water, nutritious food, and basic health care. We believe in educating girls and women about immunizations and the healthy timing and spacing of pregnancies saving the lives of newborns and new moms, helping more children live a full life beyond age five. If you believe, visit worldvision.org slash believe. everyone, welcome back to everyone that was tuned in before the break. And for those of you who are just tuning in now, my name is Sarah Macon, and this is Road to Ruin, The Journey of the Poppy. Substance abuse has haunted the halls of power and the dungeons of the poor probably as long as man was able to record mind-altering events. Although the drug and substance abuse culture seems to dominate many of the headlines, in fact, the manufacture and usage of drugs far exceeds the 240 years plus that we have celebrated our American democracy. As a matter of fact, druglibrary.org tells us that as early as 5000 BC, the Sumerians used opium, suggested by the fact that they had an ideogram for which had been translated as hull, meaning joy or rejoicing. And that's from Alfred Linsman in the publication of Addiction and Opiates. 50 centuries ago, the Sumerians did not have to worry about paying their cable bills or their cell phone bills or keeping their mortgages current. However, they had far more problems than the humanity of the new millennium is forced to endure. So having anything available to bring joy in whatever form was probably enthusiastically welcomed. According to historical mortality levels from the Encyclopedia of Population, the average life expectancy for prehistoric humans was estimated at just 20 to 35 years. The infant mortality rates were far higher from a population perspective, even in contrast to mothers that used drugs during difficult pregnancies. What makes a substance so alluring, so powerful, and so controlling so that individuals will risk and often lose life, limb, riches, and fame in order to feed and reach a manufactured and temporary heaven? Oftentimes in today's society, the use 
and abuse of illicit substances are usually indicators of underlying issues, as well as very poorly monitored and maintained medical prescribing and distribution system dedicated to opium. What is the maximum usage penalty in Afghanistan for using illegal opiates in a country that may be responsible for more than 90% of the world's heroin production? Opium production in Afghanistan meets the needs of approximately 90% of the world's heroin users. Yet, the use of illegal opium products in Afghanistan and one of the penalties associated with such usage may result in just a minimum three-month prison sentence. Historically, opium has been used in Afghan communities as medication for different conditions, particularly pain and respiratory complaints. Opium use also has a traditional role in the societies of some groups. There are a few national estimates of opium use in Afghanistan. The highest regional use is noted in the northeastern Bakashan province along the Tajik border with 20 to 30 percent of the local population is estimated to be addicted. According to the American Society of Addiction Medicine, of the 20.5 million Americans, 12 or older, that had a substance use disorder in 2015, 2 million had a substance use disorder involving prescription pain relievers, and 591,000 had a substance use disorder involving heroin. It is estimated that 23% of individuals who use heroin develop an opioid addiction. There is also drug abuse and addiction on the front lines of the growers and manufacturers of opioid products as well, as the host countries that receive and use these substances. According to Trading Economics, the gross domestic product per capita in Afghanistan when last recorded in 2016 was 596 US dollars. It is no small wonder that dirt poor countries that grow and export the poppy and all of its byproducts have little and oftentimes no sympathy for individuals in the West. The poorest of the poor in America earn $15,000 more annually than the average person in Afghanistan. Considering those numbers, it is no small secret that the people and the countries that grow and export the fruit of the poppy do not have any sympathy for the sometimes spoiled, misguided, and carefree addicts in the West that choose opiates as a means of pleasure and sometimes privilege. The populations of the West have to realize that no matter how many treatment methods that are enlisted to fight and defeat addiction, the simple role of supply and demand must be instituted. If there is no demand for opioids, then the sellers will be forced to cease cultivation and to stop growing the poppy crop or use the products obtained from the poppy on themselves. Stay with us. I'm Sarah Macon and we'll be back with more Road to Ruin, the journey of the poppy after this break. took was someone who would insist that I just try. 
Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. We built the entire library out of recycled bottles. Fried ants are delicious. We finish a clinic in our in a rainstorm. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. So I learned this dance. I'll show you this dance. In La Keg, a la Quine. The classroom was, was more of a class tent. I think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. Beans for breakfast, beans for lunch, beans for dinner. We ate a lot of beans. I learned a third language. My seatmate on the bus was a goat. Always include the village elders. Always. My morning commute was by canoe. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience. To all the Peace Corps volunteers, past, present, and future, thank you for your service to your country and the world. We are World Vision, and we believe in children. We believe in God's calling to help them flourish and achieve a full life. We believe every child deserves clean water, nutritious food, and basic health care. We believe in educating girls and women about immunizations and the healthy timing and spacing of pregnancies, saving the lives of newborns and new moms, helping more children live a full life beyond age five. If you believe, visit worldvision.org slash believe. Hi, welcome back to everyone that was tuned in before the break. Again, my name is Sarah Macon, and this is Road to Ruin, the Journey of the Poppy. Most of us now use the Global Positioning System, or GPS, in our lives on a daily basis. We use GPS to direct us to the nearest theater, supermarket, and even to guide us to the nearest physician to cure what ails us. However, there is an agent GPS that needs no electronic foundation to operate efficiently, and that is the compass of necessity. At the conclusion of the previous segment, I alluded to supply and demand. Most of the oranges grown in the Florida citrus belt end up as orange juice in supermarkets and oranges in those same produce departments all across America and the world because not all climates or soil is conducive to growing oranges. People still have a need to ingest the fruit. There is no compass needed to guide the orange growers to a place of profit. The opioid substances manufactured in the Golden Triangle countries and beyond will end up being purchased and used by those who have a want and a need for those products. However, there is an ancient marketing tool that all but assures us that the products and byproducts of the poppy will almost certainly end up on the urban streets and suburban roads in America. The navigational tool that often plots the road to addiction is the compass of necessity. Addiction can be perceived and viewed in many different ways. The following is an excerpt from Howard Markle's book, An Anatomy of Addiction, published in August 2011. One out of four Americans will either have a substance abuse or addiction problem at some point in their lives. Tragedies, such as Amy Winehouse aside, 
We all confront the reality of addiction every day, even if we don't always know or acknowledge it. Some of these addicts have even managed to change the world. As a society, we have attempted to oftentimes normalize addiction, praising and celebrating a few addicted achievers as being beyond all of our normal expectations. We also minimize the process of addiction by giving it the blanket definition of being a disease. As a person once told me, if a drug addiction was such a disease, then why isn't anyone selling $10 bags of cancer on a dark street corner? There are limits to every social, economic, mental, and spiritual situation that we will encounter in our lives. Many times we will need the help of others to assist us in confronting and overcoming those issues. However, more often than not, it will almost always require internal fortitude from us just to simply identify the positives from the negatives and from that point forward attempt to only be proactive and reactive based on the positive. Just remember, whatever we do to create the addictions may be very well the antithesis of wellness because the road to recovery must almost always start from within. Join us again on Road to Ruin, the journey of the poppy, as we unlock the mystery and solve the misery of opioid use I'm Sarah Macon. Have a great life.